Hello everyone. In this INR number 62, we are going to discuss about lung adenocarcinoma, a very important topic for exam. So lung adenocarcinoma, what is the most common site in the lung? Mostly it will be arising from the peripheral area, right? And what is the most common primary lung cancer overall? Remember, if they ask you in India, it is a squamous cell carcinoma, but overall, in this world most common lung cancer is the lung adenocarcinoma so that is why when examiner will ask you most common primary lung cancer overall that will be lung adenocarcinoma and what is most common subtype of lung cancer which is seen in smoker non-smokers and females remember in non-smoker females also lung adenocarcinoma is most common right so overall most common primary lung cancer adenocarcinoma non-smoker most common is adenocarcinoma in female most common is adenocarcinoma and in case of lung scarring you can see there is a lung specimen i have shown you this area is having a scarring and then they have lung cancer so whenever you find lung scarring remember it is a very important mcq lung scarring is most commonly associated with adenocarcinoma because usually scarring is usually other areas of the body parts usually scarring is associated with a squamous cell carcinoma but here it is associated with adenocarcinoma right so most common lung cancer in lung scarring is lung adenocarcinoma so what are the genetic mutations responsible for lung adenocarcinoma why we should know about it because now many of the pharmacological treatments are based on these mutations so in some other uh, video i will be discussing about that uh, you know mutation and their pharmacological treatment so activating mutation of the lung cancer so what we are going to see kras is the most common mutation kras mutation is most common mutation egfr epidermal growth factor receptor or rb1 gene is again a most common mutation in the uh, lung adenocarcinoma and ALK, anaplastic lymphoma kinase. So these are the three important mutations we have to remember, right? Usually, uh, we say adenocarcinoma is an invasive cancer, but there is a one variant called as bronchioloalveolar adenocarcinoma. Bronchioloalveolar carcinoma, they will not penetrate the basement membrane and that is why they are also called as adenocarcinoma in situ because basement membrane is not invaded right and what is the origin so this was the question in exam origin is from the clara cells which is present in the terminal bronchiole so mostly they are arising from the clara cell they can also arise from the type 2 pneumocyte so they can also arise from the type 2 pneumocyte but most commonly they are arising from the clara cell that is the point you have to remember right and chest x-ray when you will see of this bronchioloalveolar carcinoma why it is important they will show you hazy infiltrates and they will be resembling like a pneumonia so pneumonia like consolidation can be seen so you can see bronchioloalveolar carcinoma on chest x-ray examination you can notice there is a hazy opacity so air space opacity in the right upper lobe so this pneumonia like consolidation this is important mcq pneumonia like consolidation is seen in which lung cancer adenocarcinoma which variant bronchiolo alveolar adenocarcinoma subtype and they are also showing you so many small nodules throughout the both lung lobes so bilateral multiple nodules so that is why i said chest x-ray hazy infiltrate like a pneumonia is a feature of bronchiolo alveolar carcinoma as i said it is also known as adenocarcinoma in situ because they are not crossing the basement membrane right so this is the only variant of adenocarcinoma which is having good prognosis this was a neat pg question please remember this was a neat pg question which variant of adenocarcinoma is having good prognosis so it is bronchiolo alveolar because otherwise adenocarcinoma has a poor prognosis otherwise adenocarcinoma has a poor prognosis right so that is why they are having good prognosis because of because of adenocarcinoma in situ they will be not crossing the basement membrane right so when you will check the biopsy of the bronchiolo alveolar carcinoma or adenocarcinoma in situ lepidic pattern they will show you butterfly sitting on the fence lepidic pattern means butterfly sitting on the fence like you can see butterfly sitting on the fence and you can see this is the alveolar septa and tumor cells are growing along the alveolar septa only right so these are the alveolar septa and these are the tumor cells growing along the alveolar septa as it butterfly sitting on the fence so this is bronchiolo alveolar subtype and you can see in between mucin is there right so bronchiolo alveolar carcinoma lepidic pattern means butterfly sitting on the fence what is that means tumor cells are growing tumor cells are first of all tumor cells are tall columnar because adenocarcinoma they are growing along the alveolar septa so they are growing along the alveolar septa 
and they will be having no invasion remember no invasion because it is adenocarcinoma institute remember adenocarcinoma institute they will not cross the basement membrane that is why there is no invasion into the pleura blood vessel or surrounding structure you remember the only variant of adenocarcinoma which is having good prognosis is the bronchiolo alveolar subtype because they do not invade into the surrounding structures like a pleura or blood vessel or any other tissue right so this is the bronchiolo alveolar carcinoma in situ now look at the adenocarcinoma what do you mean by adenocarcinoma adenocarcinoma it means they are having glandular pattern what do you mean by glandular pattern i have discussed this in my offline classes multiple times when you see the lumen and tumor cells are surrounding them when you see the lumen and tumor cells are surrounding them that is called as glandular pattern right so that is called as glandular pattern central lumen covered by tumor cells central lumen covered by tumor cell and that is what we are going to see here also right there is a central lumen and they are covered by tumor cell so you can see these are the central lumen and covered by tumor cell so this is the glandular pattern which is characteristic of adenocarcinoma so what they will be positive because they are having mucin so mucin will be positive lung adenocarcinoma is very notorious for aerogenous spread remember this is the exam question aerogenous spread or lung to lung spread will be seen in adenocarcinoma of the lung and what will be ihc marker so to uh, identify the lung cancer ihc marker these are four important ihc marker which examiner ask in exam number one is thyroid transcription factor one ttf1 they will be positive then napsin a will be positive there will be cytokeratin 7 remember cytokeratin 7 is positive but cytokeratin 20 is negative so cytokeratin 7 positive 20 will be negative and anaplastic lymphoma kinase will be positive so these are ihc marker which will be positive in the lung adenocarcinoma so what are these four ihc marker ttf1 napsin a cytokeratin 7 will be positive 20 will be negative and anaplastic lymphokinase will be positive right and what is the paraneoplastic syndrome this is a very important point where examiner ask in clinical exam also right paraneoplastic syndrome there are two important paraneoplastic syndrome in the uh, adenocarcinoma one is hypertrophic osteoarthropathy right so what is hypertrophic osteoarthropathy you will see clubbing and periostitis means inflammation so increased bone deposition and inflammation in the small hand joint or small limb joint so you can see hand also ankle also you can see he can see periostitis so there is a there is a periostitis in these two uh, ankle areas bones right and then you can see clubbing is present so clubbing and periostitis is called as hypertrophic osteoarthropathy hypertrophic osteoarthropathy remember hypertrophic osteoarthropathy is seen in most commonly in lung adenocarcinoma this is one question they are less commonly associated with or least commonly associated with small cell cancer of the lung so sometime examiner they ask this hypertrophic osteoarthropathy is not seen in small cell cancer of the lung and most commonly seen in adenocarcinoma then second is the trousseau syndrome second paraneoplastic syndrome is trousseau syndrome what is trousseau syndrome migratory superficial thrombophlebitis because of underlying deep venous thrombosis because of the mucin of the cancer they will be they will be releasing the thrombotic substances which will be causing deep venous thrombosis and they will be keep on migrating into the superficial veins and that is why it is called as migratory superficial thrombophlebitis so this trousseau syndrome is also associated with adenocarcinomas so they can be associated with other places adenocarcinomas also like a pancreas or prostate but mostly in we are talking about the lung cancer so in lung cancer trousseau syndrome yes will be seen in adenocarcinoma so now you can see there is a deep vein thrombosis and there is a reddish color and this is the trousseau syndrome right so you can see here limb edema is there deep vein thrombosis is there and you can see there is a swelling and somewhere you can see swelling of the vein also so this is called as migratory superficial thrombophlebitis or trousseau syndrome so these are the two important paraneoplastic syndrome for the lung adenocarcinoma it's a very important topic so keep revising this in neat pg you will get question from here best wishes for your exam